My name is Anthony. I'm with Laser Products. I'm really excited to share LT3 Raptor with you today. This is new software built from the ground up with lots of feedback from our users. It's the same simplicity with an enhanced experience. And I'll show you what is different, what is new, and how quick measuring just got quicker. Let's get started. When you launch the new software, it's going to bring you to a screen that has a list of all your jobs. And we'll go into a lot of detail of why this screen's so important. But for now, let's jump right in. I'm going to click Add up at the top. And this is just going to be called Raptor Demo. I'm also going to launch with this calibration page. And that will give us our plane. Now, initially, it'll say disconnected, but that's OK. I'm going to turn on the laser. You can turn on the laser after you've started a new job here. And the system will detect your equipment, make sure the device is powered on, make sure you have your witness marks at the top aligned and your 2D lock locked. Same as always, right? I'm going to hit continue. We see the connection screen. We're good to go. So here's the new Raptor main interface. I already have a job loaded here. And we're going to measure this again, and we'll follow through all the steps. But what you'll see right off the bat is that up at the very top right side, we have our undo and redo. I've got my quick actions to turn on and off here. And what used to be our line or cross or circle mode that we'd press, those are all live in this red capture icon. And just next to that, I can then pick my modes. If it's a line, if it's a reference. Reference is a point in CAD space, what used to be called a cross. Okay. We'll go over these other functions uh, later in the process. All right. As I go through each one of these buttons in the what we call the action panel or action menu off to the side, it pulls up just to the left some of our sub commands. And we'll go into these in better detail. Another great feature that I've loved is the quick action panel. Now, that's an area where I was able to customize my favorite features, my favorite buttons, and access them over and over again. Now, the feedback we've had from users is, can I customize more of my layout? Everybody works a little bit differently. And so if I go up to Settings, we can pull up this UX menu where entire portions of the screen can be moved around. So our quick action can be on the left or the right. The action bar, so my capture, erase, draw functions right now on the right, that can be moved to the left. Right? If you prefer to click with your left hand, that might be really convenient. I can make, I'm going to put that back to the right. I can make a compact view and have more drawing area. And my pop-up preview of my sinks, my line directions, uh, you can move that around wherever you'd like as well. I'm going to set with the action bar a little larger, so it has the descriptions a little clearer, I'll hit close. Now that we've gone over what the screen looks like, let's jump into a measure. Uh, capturing a plane is basically the same. They just tidied up the screen a little bit. Let's get started. I'm going to measure left, right, and back. So I'm using a Lino laser. This is my favorite way to measure a plane. And within reason, I just like to give a nice big triangle over my workspace. Three points, we have a good plane. We've set the plane, let's start shooting some points. I'm gonna go into capture and line, and it's really easy to pick my colors. I'm gonna shoot in default, which is a dashed line. Right? Oh. I wanna show you this new function at the top. Instead of continuous and autofill it, these are functions we've seen before, I'm gonna use two point line. So every time we measure, I got one. I'll come forward to the next. Now, I don't have to hit start new line. I can just pop down to this panel, one and two. I'm ready to keep rocking. So I come across the dishwasher to one end of my sink run, come over here. Just cut that out. And now I'm going to capture one side of my range run. 
And then I like to go across the entire thing. Range run. One point. Come around, get another point. This averages out my range opening. So I get nice straight lines across the range. And I haven't had to press start new line at all. I come over here, right there. And it's tricky to see, but this panel is gonna give me a hard time. So I'm gonna use scribe blocks. Okay. I'm gonna switch over to continuous mode and scribe our wall. And here, it just capture as much detail as necessary for your job. Is there gonna be a backsplash? Is it a tile backsplash? You guys know what's appropriate. That's not what this video is about, but I'm just gonna pop through. I'm gonna recommend pulling your line across the back of your range. You'll see why later. Real world situation, I would have cleared more off the countertops or had my client clear them off ahead of time. But in this case, it's my wife's kitchen, so this is what we get. And I am just rocking these points. This new system is much faster. Next, I'm gonna shoot the island and I'm gonna use our last laser mode, auto fill it. And here obviously it just means every two lines, the software will automatically fill it our corners. Some users have told me that they never use this function, but hey, it saved me a few thousand manual fillets, so I use it when appropriate. There we go, got some basic geometry captured. Next, I'm gonna go into the color menu and change over to ease and polish. Notice how big and easy it is to click on these buttons. It really is designed to be a touch interface. This is a feature that I love. I'm going into offset, and instead of having a pop-up right in the middle of the screen, Everything's up and out of the way. In this case, in the command bar, I have it set at the top, right? I wanna do a single element. I wanna do an offset of one and a half inches. What's great about this is I can just click one and a half and it adds it up, okay? I can hit okay. I have a few other options. I can keep the original and I can revise the style, right? So I'm just gonna start clicking on my lines Super easy, it highlights the line as I'm hovering over with a mouse. There are other ways to do this too. You can still, this is touch interface, but I'm using a mouse today to make it a little easier to see what I'm clicking on. I'm gonna get these edges. I'm gonna go turn off Keep Original. I don't have to press Offset again. It's right there where I need it. And so this line is perfect, easy, done. Real quick, I'm gonna go and do a two inch offset for that cabinet panel where I have my scribe blocks. I already have an inch and a half here, watch this trick. I can just hit a half inch. It adds, <laughs> and it's just a shortcut to modify our geometry even faster. I'll hit okay, and move that where it needs to be. Again, I'm gonna go to my amount of offset. I'm gonna hit clear. I'm gonna keep the original in this case. I've offset the 10 inches. I've got my main offsets done, super easy and fast. Another major upgrade to the software is what we call smart edge detection. So many of the lines that we see on the screen right now, the software has intelligence, we're calling it design intelligence, built in. So my continuous lines, instead of just being a bunch of little lines that are all next to each other, the software has the ability to start knowing that they should act as a group. Let's take a look. First thing, I want to revise the color of these wall lines that I'm hovering over. I love this highlight feature. Um, again, I'm using a mouse just because it's a little easier for today's video. You can see what I'm pointing at. We're gonna go to color, revise. I pick the new color. In this case, it's an unfinished edge. Now, traditionally, I could click align, and it would do something like that, right? 
I'm going to turn this toggle off and I'm going to undo those steps. Okay. Edge is on in my revise mode. I can click anywhere on this line and watch what happens. Whole thing. Whole line is updated as a group. Another great feature that's part of Raptor's edge detection. It allows fillet to work in an intelligent way. So traditionally, I would go into my fillet. I'm going to sharp fillet this top what's on the screen, the top corner here. And it's very likely that this would be a remake if I didn't grab this section closest to my finished edge. If I went back here or accidentally clicked on this line, it could be a mistake. It could be a remake or installers are trimming in the field. So I'm gonna intentionally come back here and click this, hover over the green line and that pink highlight is showing that the design intelligence and the edge detection are grabbing the right piece of the line segment to finish our edge. And let's just keep working around the drawing and connect. And you'll notice as I click on things, it gives me a highlight preview, making it really easy to see how I'm working. It's going to make it easier to train new measure techs because they're gonna have a better understanding of what the geometry is doing on the screen. All right, let's go on this wall, same thing. I'm gonna pick what traditionally would have been the wrong part of the line, but you'll see as I hover, I'm gonna zoom in so you get a better view. It's grabbing the last section of the wall and will complete the fillet. Fewer mistakes, quick is getting quicker. So let's add a radius. Many of you are thinking, well, you can't add a radius yet. I haven't put my dimensions in. We'll get there. I'm gonna go to fill it and put a radius. I'm gonna click on the size. I have some things pre-programmed in here. I can hit one inch. And just like that, I get a connection. I get a preview. Notice I'm not in, you would say, even the correct color. I'm in the unfinished color, but I'm still getting, because the geometry is smart. The design intelligence is working for us. I get a preview with the radius and it's in the correct layer. Let's change this to a three inch. I know that's really not fashionable, but you get really get a good preview of what that looks like on this island. Bam, bam, there we go. Design intelligence, simple operations, enhanced experience. So I've done 10,000 kitchens. The vast majority of those have a range opening. And I would have to use manual CAD functions to create a square, even opening. This new software has something great. It just makes the process really easy and is going to reduce remakes. This is, for many companies, one of the top two things that cause remakes on a job. All right, let's jump in. On the screen, you can see nothing has been rotated. Okay, I'm going to go capture and opening. I have my drop downs here. I'm gonna show you one that's a little bit more advanced, but let's imagine that there is a slide-in range here that needs a rail behind the stove. So as I update the screen, we have another option here. I've already got my width and my depth set correctly, but watch how easy this is. So the first step is to select the front edge of the line to base the opening off of. This is the line that is creating the perpendicular opening. So that's this green line that runs across the entire straight range run. I'm set up to measure on this pin target. Let me dial that in just a bit. Take a single reading. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little here so we can see what happens. I get the X. So I'm gonna go hit this pin target on the right hand side of the range. If this is a slide in range, now, in this case I need to tell the software which direction we're going. So I'll measure one more time. And there is a nice clean opening with seams in the back. It's generated all that for us. It's done. It's fast. No mistakes. In this case, I'm going to do regular width. I'm going to undo, change my mode to width only, select the front edge, hit my point on the Left, oh, you know what? 
I'm realizing my color is in unfinished. I already shot a point. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to eased and polished. I didn't have to exit the function because the colors are a mode you can pick at any time. Now I'm lined up on the right. I select finished opening. Done. No mistakes. Okay. I got another thing to capture. That's the sink center. I'm going to line up here. So I have my point ready to go. So what I do is I'm in capture. I go to center line, select the line to base the center line off of. Well, that's this one. I want the center line to go in this direction on the screen. I just read the point. There it is. We haven't done the rotate function at all yet. This center line also has this great feature. It has this extra, like what we call a tail, where it extends through to the front edge of our countertop. Right? Uh, while we're here, I'm going to show you real quick view angles. As I zoom in here, the range opening is at 90s in the front, just like we want. Our walls in the back aren't straight, and they're not perfectly square, just like we want. Okay. If I come up to this edge, you'll see, and I did exaggerate my targets a little bit, that this edge is nasty. Let's go to draw, line, one point perpendicular mode. Watch how easy this is. I'm going to highlight the line, hit the direction that I want the line to go. There it is. Now I'm going to erase that nasty line that's wrong. Go back to our fillet. I can pick anywhere on the family of line segments and get a proper fillet. Let's check our work. 90 degree corner, done and done. This is another example of quick getting quicker and design intelligence. You'll notice we've done two functions that typically require a rotate or there are mistakes. I want to show you the new rotate tool. I love it. Instead of there being two different rotate functions that are called the same thing but do slightly different things, it's one button right in the bottom corner here. Rotate. I get this cool slider and I can spin the drawing around freely, right? And I don't need to do anything or leave this function. I'm close, but not perfect on my or sync run here. I'm going to then click on our main line and it's straight. Done and done. Let's draw a sync. It's real fast, real easy. I'm going to go to pages. I'm going to add a drawing page. And real quick, let's go draw a rectangle. Uh, I already have this preloaded, but let's just make a 17 inch by 28 inch rectangle. Okay, I'll hit best fit. I'll do fillet, radii. Uh, let's do a single inch radius. There's a shortcut here. One and two, again, our previews, super easy. In my drop-in mode, I have a set origin. I used to build in a four inch setback to my entire sync library. Here, I don't need to do that anymore. I'm gonna click right in the center of our file and let's save it, okay? Go my drop-ins and this is a 28 by 17 with a one inch radius. I'm gonna go ahead and just save that right here. I'm gonna go back to my first page, I'm gonna go drop in. I can select my drop ins up here if we need to, okay? That's the one I just saved. Notice we haven't rotated the drawing, but it's okay. I'm gonna hover over the line, make sure I get the intersection point that, that's selected right now, pick which direction we want to go. There it is, done and done. So we dropped in the sink. It looks pretty straight. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm gonna show you a new feature. It's really handy. I'm gonna go up to distance. This is our hub for on-site measurement verification. I'm gonna hit parallel. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna select one edge and another. It tells me in three locations, four inches, four inches, four inches, 
those are parallel lines. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use this new rotate feature one more time, and we're gonna straighten this up like that. Looks pretty good. Let's add a backsplash. I'm gonna go into draw, the splash miter function. Now, I'm gonna show you the two point method that we've used for ages. I'm gonna click a point here, click a point here, and tell the software which direction on the screen I want it to go. Okay, we've done a two point. Let's see how we can make this better. I'm gonna use the edge detection. Again, these are the menus where we can set our heights. Uh, I'm gonna do an eight inch offset, hit okay, hover over the line on the side of the line that I want it to go. With one click, I've got good splash. Done and done. We've got a great start to this drawing. We've got a four inch backsplash that'll cover any irregularities in the wall. Now, lots of programmers have had to do this step there, but let me show you how easy it is here. I'm in draw, I go to scribe line, and now we're gonna do a straight line offset. I can set my max depth. This is the maximum tolerance that this feature will allow. So you can adjust that, right? In this case, I'm gonna set that to a, let's do three quarter, and I'm gonna use this menu and hit one, two, three quarters of an inch. Super easy. I even can hit the star and I've just made a quick setting. Super easy, if I wanna get rid of that setting, hit the trash can. Super quick, super easy. I'm hit, okay. My taper length, this is the length the blade will allow for a 12 inch taper length. And I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the effect here. I'm gonna click on this line. Click on this line, zoom in. I'm gonna hit done. And what we see are straight lines, and it's leaving a dashed line that'll be ignored later, right? That's the actual geometry of the wall that's saved as a reference uh, for good, clear documentation. But this is a straight cut. It's gonna be really easy to produce on the saw and install. Let's do the other side. Again, straight line offset. I'm gonna click one, I'm gonna click two walls, I'm gonna hit done, and let's just zoom in to see what's happening. All right, we get a nice clean corner, straight line. You can see the deviations with the dashed line. Okay, I'm gonna do scribe tabs with edge. So this is a great feature if you have a saw jet combo. Users have been requesting scribe tabs. We have a straight edge and a little tab at the end. Makes for a really easy install. So I've got a three quarter inch depth and a two inch offset, that means how long the tab is. I'm gonna pick my back wall first, then my side wall. It matters that I click on my tabs in the same order. My back wall first, that's where I want one scribe tab to be. Then my side wall, this is my second tab. Bam, looks perfect, easy on your installers. Okay, let's add a couple seams real quick, super simple. I'm in draw mode still. Let's go to seam line. Up at the top, I can pick a European left. And let's make that radius, you know, it's two inches now, but I like to add an eighth, give the tooling a little room to move inside that radius. I'll hit okay. Pick my corner. And as I hover, it automatically is gonna detect where the seam should end. And it's going to create this pink highlight is showing that that's 90 degrees to the front edge. Two clicks, seam is done. Let's go to the other side. I do need to change to European right. I'll zoom in, pick my intersection, go the direction that I'd like. Again, I'm getting a straight seam. Two clicks, it's done. I wanna show you another great feature. Super quick, super easy. I'm gonna change my color on one of these sides to unfinished. That represents where I have a cabinet panel that's enclosing my refrigerator. So I'll go color, revise, unfinished, and change that color. I'm gonna go back into our draw menu. We're gonna to go to notch. I'm gonna zoom in where this notch is gonna live. I have one quarter inch by two and a quarter inch. That's what happens most often for me. Hit the front edge, the side, 
the direction of the notch, and look, not only does it create the notch for us, but you'll see we have the correct colors. This template's really coming together nice and quick, nice and easy. Let's add some dimensions. I'm going to go to the label menu, and I'm going to do two-point dimensions. This is traditional dimensions that you've done for years. Let's go along this wall a little bit. Okay, I can do two-point dimensions and several different locations. It's nice and easy. What I'm excited to show you is the edge detection version, where all I do is highlight here. I have specific offset turned on, and I get a nice, clean, clean set of dimensions. Super easy, and on top of it all, this island, is detecting the entire straight run. So our radii are excluded from the dimension. As part of the beta testers for Raptor, we want your feedback. We care about making this the best it can be. So as an active member, give us your notes. We want to hear from you. We want to make this the best software it can be. Remember, this software has been in the works for a long time, but we aren't finished yet. It's going to be continuously improving. Thank you for your time. We can't wait to see what you think.